Welcome to Minesweeper, basic game functions in Python with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. And let me give a quick shout out to my members. Uh, you can see here people who have chosen to pay and support the channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. I do also appreciate viewers, subscribers, everyone. I appreciate everyone. What can I say? So today we're going to be taking a look at how to make the game Minesweeper. Now I got this off of the Wikipedia, but basically hopefully you know what Minesweeper is. There's some mines, you have to find them, and you click and you right click and do different things. Now today, what I'm gonna be looking at is not that big nice graphical thing. And this is where, you know, beginners often get hung up on, okay, well I gotta, I gotta have all these graphics, how am, I gonna get the, how am I gonna click on it, how am I gonna right click, how am I gonna do all these different things? And what you need to realize is that a text-based version of the game is going to have all of the basic features that you need. And once you solve that problem first, and then you can start solving the graphical side of where you and how you interact with the computer. And so what I want to do today is basically, as you can see down here in this image, is to come up with a basic text-based version. Now, this is not going to be a working game. This is just going to be the functions that you need to create the game. And again, this is, I think, a really good lesson for beginners, especially just because, you know, beginners need to understand how, how can I put it, that the way the information is represented in the computer's memory is different to how it's displayed. And that's, that's a really key concept. Uh, it's, a, it's a type of abstraction that you see. So let's go ahead and start doing some coding and we'll see how far we get here. Um, now, I've chosen a nine by nine board. And the reason I've done that is because, well actually the reason I'm making this video is one of my students is working on this for her final project. And so I can help her, uh, actually so I can better help her I'm going to sit here and figure out how to do this. Um, so I've done some of this already, so I have an idea of where I'm going to go, but I do want to make some changes. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we, we're going to need is we're going to need a grid. Okay. And this grid is going to be a two dimensional list. And as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be nine by nine. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put zero comma zero comma zero. Actually, I'm just going to maybe no spaces to keep it easy to read. Zero, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and comma. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And let's see here, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I now have a grid of nine rows and nine columns. Now note, we're doing rows and columns, not columns and rows. And this is important because of the way this is structured. And it's just, if we, we think like that, so it's all rows, then columns. So we're doing basically Y then X, if you want to think of it that way. But it's probably easier to think of it as Y's and, or as rows and columns. Now this particular grid, yeah, I'm doing, I I'm, should I'm say I'm using it to represent where the mines are. Okay, that's the only job of this particular grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a one where I want the mines to be. And I'm gonna put that like that. And I'll put some more stuff over here. And I'm just making them randomly. It doesn't really matter where I put them. And again, I didn't need to choose zero and one, but it makes sense. Um, and it's kind of basically what our grid is going to look like. Now, what I'm going to recommend doing here is the following. I'm going to say empty equals zero. I'm going to say mine equals one. So anywhere there is a zero, or that means that it is empty. And where there is a one, it means there is a mine. Now, I'm going to be using this later in my code. Okay, so I'm going to put this declare constants. Alrighty, now we have a grid, and this is where, again, this is where all of the, how do I put it, this is where all of the mines are located. But we're also going to need a secondary grid for the player. Okay, and what I could do actually is, well, actually I'll do it this way player grid equals. Now the player grid has to be the same size as the 
grid. And what I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put minus 1. And I'll explain why in a second. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, I don't know if this is the absolute best way, but I know it's a way. And I think it's a way that uh, my student will understand as well. 9 and hopefully people viewing this will understand okay so you can see I've got a 9 by 9 grid here I hope I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see if anything happens okay good there's no errors so so far so good and then what I want to do is up here I'm gonna make unknown negative 1 oops unknown so the player grid now when we start the game the player hasn't made any guesses yet so the player doesn't really know what's in the grid. So it is unknown, as opposed to we know how many there are, how many different neighbors there are. Okay, so, so this is an important thing. We have basically chosen a way of representing the data. Now, I could have done it like this. I could have done, yeah, I could have done an empty space, and then I could have done, say, M for mine. Okay, that would work. Um, it'll take up a little bit more memory. Um, it'll be a little bit more processing, I believe. But I think this is an easier way just by using integers to represent these values. And, and then by declaring these constants, we get to you know still use the integers as our data type, but we also get to use you know variable names to make our, our code clearer and easier to understand. Um, so in no particular order, um, what I want to do is I want to start making some functions. So I don't know, you know, if it matters which order we do it in, but you know, some of the things in this game, we're going to need to click, okay, and so I'm going to make a function called define click. I'm just going to put pass for now. We're going to need a set flag function and pass. Uh, let's see what else. We're going to need a function that will count how many mines there are near our particular spot. So I'm going to say, you know, count, let's call it count, that's fine, and pass for now. And then also we're going to need a function to, you know, show the grid. So we'll say show grid and pass. So, I mean, for now, we can just basically print a grid, but um, what we want to do is, I'm trying to think where, where we want to start here, because um, we can start at any of these. Now, count is pretty complicated. <laughs> um, click is pretty complicated. Set flag is not too complicated. Um, show grid is not particularly complicated. So, let's go ahead and let's, let's do a basic click. Okay, so thinking about our grid, what we want to do is we're clicking on the player grid. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. We're clicking on the grid somewhere. And what we're going to do in this program is we're going to basically simulate that. We're not going to be doing the actual clicking. We're just testing the functions. So let's go ahead and click. And we're going to be clicking on a row and a column. Now, how we get that information into the function will depend on which GUI toolkit we're using. Uh, but for now, we're just going to use some simple functions. So the first thing I want to do is check if it is a bomb. Okay. So this is probably the easiest part. So what I have to do is check the grid. So if grid row, remember it's row column, not column row equals, uh, do we do bomb? Uh, mine, not bomb. So equals mine. And again, this is equal, this is the same as putting one. But I figured if we do it this way, it's a lot easier to understand what the code is doing. I'm going to say print, boom. Okay. And basically, you've died. And we could end the game here, but this is just for testing purposes. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, nothing happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some testing code down here. Okay. So let's look at our grid. So this is row 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can see at 0, 
one, row one, column one, there is a mine. So that should give us a boom. So let's go ahead and test it. So we're gonna say click one, one. Let's run it. And you can see down here, we got a boom. Now, that doesn't mean the code is working correctly. So we should also test it on an empty spot. So I'm gonna do zero, zero. And run it, and you can see nothing came up. So this gives me some confidence that it is working correctly. And I, I think it's working correctly. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, now at this point, we probably wouldn't print boom. We would print out the, the whole you know, the whole thing with, you know, all the bombs printed and sort of things. But for now, we're just going to do boom. And we're again, we're just testing the logic of our game. And the logic is a bit complicated, uh, as you'll see. Okay, the next thing I want to test out, which is probably the, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do set flag. Set flag is pretty easy, actually, um, I think. So again, we'll do row and call. So when we set a flag, okay, we can only set a flag where it is unknown, where the player hasn't already, you know, clicked or hasn't already, like, uh, how can I put it, hasn't, uh, you know, done the count. So we, we don't have a count yet. So what I'm going to do is if player grid row and call equals uh, unknown. And again, unknown is simply negative one. But because I did it this way, you know, it makes it more clear. Then what we can say is player grid row call equals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use negative two for flag. Equals flag. Okay, so up here I'm going to put flag equals negative two. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't use like positive numbers like two for unknown and three for flag, it, it'll become clear in a little bit. So just trust me on this one for now. And so let's go ahead and test this. Let's go ahead and test that. So we, we've got a click, and let's go ahead and do set flag. And let's go ahead and look at our thing. Okay, well, let's set a flag here at zero, zero. Okay, so zero comma zero. And again, this is row column. And then to test it, mm, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll say, we'll say print uh, player grid. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And you can see we got a negative two there. Now, this is not a particularly attractive way of printing this out. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our show grid method. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. So we're going to do for row in range the length of the grid. And I guess we could do this with, we'll just set it to player grid. Because I don't think we ever actually really need to see this grid. But we do need to see what the player is doing. So um, I'll go ahead and put that player grid. And again, it would be smart to, to put the value here and pass it in. I could do this with classes, but I, I think this is probably an easier way for most people. Um, and then I'm going to say row, let's see. And then for call in range, length. And then watch this, this, watch this carefully. It's player grid row, because it's the current row. Let me sure we have enough parentheses there. So row and column. Now I could have just done, you know, nine because we set, we set the size. But if we do it this way, if we change the size of the grid later, it's still gonna work. Now watch what I do here. Uh, well, for now, I'm gonna go print. I'm gonna use an F string. Okay, and this is a, this is Python three. This will not work in Python two. So what I want to do is I want to type. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's just say value for now equals uh, player grid 
row call. And we'll just go ahead and print the value. Okay. And so down here, I'm going to do go ahead and do show grid. And then also at the end of every row, I need to print. And what this does here, this section here, you may not have seen that, is it prevents the print statement from going to the next line. Because what I want to do is I want to print across. And this is similar to if you're coming from Java, this would be like print uh, versus print line or print line. Okay, there we go. So now there is our player's grid. These are all unknown. Okay. And this is where we put the flag. Okay. Now you can see we, we click 0, 0 and nothing happened because we're not finished with that code yet. Um, but what I want to do here with the grid is I want to print it out a little bit nicer than this. Okay. It just happened to work out because they're all negative numbers. Uh, but if some of them weren't, it would get kind of messed up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type symbols equals, and I'm going to make a dictionary here. And so, let's see, our first one is going to be a negative one. And that's, I'm going to use a period for that. Our second one is going to be negative two. I should, probably should have done the other order. Do negative two. And that's going to be an F for flag. And then if it's a zero, actually if it's a number, we'll just leave it the way it is. And yeah, we'll do it that way. Um, so if it's a one, no, we can't do it that way. So negative f negative two, and I guess that's it actually. Yeah, for now that's that's gonna have to be it. Um, yeah. So so I'll say if value in symbols, um, we'll say. Hmm. Symbol equals symbols value. So if it's negative two, give me an F. If it's negative one, give me a period. And we'll put symbol here. Else symbol, we want to equals the number, equals value. Okay. Maybe I'll make that a string just in case because we want to print out the numbers. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Okay, that's pretty good. So now we got a flag and nothing else. All right. Um, yeah, so far so good. So let's go ahead and take a look here. The next thing we want to deal with is counting. Okay, is how do we count? And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So we want to count how many mines there are adjacent to a particular spot okay so so let's say for example we're at row zero one two column one so we're here the answer obviously should be four okay so what we have to do so we have to check this space this space this space this space so we have to check all eight locations to make sure to see if there is a mine. If there's a mine, then we count it. Now, the other thing we have to be careful of is let's say we're here. There is no space here. We'd get an error if we try to access that. Okay, so we have to deal with that situation. So let's go ahead and give that a shot and see what happens. Um, I have a pretty good idea of how to do it. And let me get a drink here. As you can probably hear my voice is getting a little dry. But this is kind of interesting. This is actually an interesting problem. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to return the count. Okay. Now, in this case, we're only looking at this grid. Okay, We're not looking at the player grid. Um, but the, the answer is actually going to end up going into the player grid, but that's, that's for a different section. So what we're going to do is we're going to be starting at a particular row and column. Okay. And as I mentioned, we need to you know look at you know the upper left, top, top right, right, bottom. So I'm not quite sure what we can call this. Let's let's go ahead and try to call this offsets. Okay. And I'm going to be making a tuple here. 
And it's a tuple, not a list, because it's never going to change. OK, so again, so from here to here, so starting here and going here, it's minus one row, minus one column. Okay, so I need to do the, let's see, where's that at? I need to do all of those in this tuple. So it's going to be minus one and minus one. Let's we'll put them together, save space. Then we're going to be doing minus one, zero, because it's, again, it's y and x. It's columns, or it's rows and then columns. And then we're going to be doing minus one and one. Okay. Now we want to do the, right middle. So it's going to be the same row, but plus one for the column. Then we're going to do the bottom. That's going to be one and one. And normally I would put spaces in here, but I don't want it to go off the screen. So then it's going to be one and zero. And the order doesn't really matter here. Um, then it's going to be one and negative one. You'll see what I do here in a second. And then we need the, the box to the left, the cell to the left. And that's going to give us uh, 0 and negative, negative 1. Okay. So this is all of the offsets. Okay. Now we're looking for a count. Okay. So we're starting out count 0. And what we're going to do is for offset in offsets. So we're going to have an offset for the row and an offset for the column. So offset row equals offset 0. Offset for the column equals offset 1. Because this is the rows and this is the columns. And we're just iterating through each of these particular offsets. There's eight of them. Now, I could have done a bunch of if, if, else statements, and that would work. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit better for you, I think. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, actually, offset row, yeah. So then our row that we're looking at, actually, we'll, we'll do it this way. Offset row equals row, the current row, plus the offset and the current column plus the offset. Okay, so if we're at, what we say here, so if we're at 0, 1, 2, if we're at 2, 1, we want to look at uh, 1, 0. We want to look at 1, 2, and 1, 3, and all the way around. Okay. So we take the row that we got sent, passed into the function. That's the center. And then we add the offsets for the row and the offsets for the column. Now, we have to check for boundaries. Okay, now, it's very, very easy to do. So if offset row, uh, actually, we got a couple different conditions here. So if offset row, it has to be greater than or equal to 0 and offset row is less than or equal to uh, 8, because there's going to be 9. And offset call has the same, same restrictions, greater than or equal to 0. And offset call is less than or equal to 8. And again, I know I could generalize this a little bit better, um, but I think this is easier to understand. So basically, as long as these offsets are within the boundaries of our grid, then we can go ahead and count it. So if grid offset row offset call for column equals, and again, I'm going to put mine here, okay? because mine is 1, and 0 and 1 tells us it's a mine. Okay? Then we say count plus equals 1. And again, there's, there's a loop here. So once the loop is finished, we return the count. Okay. And that is it. That's, that's the function.
Okay, so we have our offsets because minus one, minus one, minus one, zero, minus one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, negative one, zero, negative one. Again, these are row column combinations. And then we count, and for each offset, we calculate the new row and the new column. And you know, some people might write temp row, temp column, you know, whatever you write is fine. Um, I, I'm really particular about variable names so that it is obvious what's going on. And then here we got to check and make sure that it is within the boundaries of the grid. And then return the count. So let's go ahead and test it. Um, so again, let's do zero, one, two. So column or row two, column one. So let's go ahead and print get count. Did I just call it, I just call it count. Count. Okay, let's do it. Call it count. And the row we said was going to be two and was it two and two or two and one? Two and one, I think. Two and one, yeah. So we should get a four there. So let's go ahead and test it. And we got a four. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Okay, now let's test a couple others. Let's test a case where there's none. So let's do this one here. So this is going to be let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and column 7. So 4, 7. Okay, 0. That's good. That's what we wanted. And let's do one more. Uh, let's do row seven, column two. Okay, and we got two. So, so far it's working. Now I should test more combinations to make sure I didn't make a mistake, but I'm pretty confident that I did it correctly. Um, it's not my first time with the rodeo, as they say. All right, so now we have a way to count how many there are. Okay, so. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy with what's going on. Now, this next part is where it gets a little complicated. Um, yeah, it's, it gets a little bit complicated. We got to think about how this is going to work. And, you know, those of you who've done a little bit more programming, we could do this, I think, as a recursive function, which would be a way of doing it. I'm just going to do it with a little bit of loop action and some if statements. So we got to think about what happens in this game. And it's a little bit similar to what's going on here. So I'm going to be copying some of this code actually and using it. So what we got to do, so let's say the player clicks, you know, let's say the player clicks here. And again, I'm not a, an expert on this game, so I might be doing it wrong, but you know, we'll, we'll worry about the exact rules later. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to start checking well, first I'm going to check if it's a bomb or not, if it's, or if it's a mine. If it's a mine, game over. We've already done that. We've already got our click method, and if it's a mine, boom. And I could, I could just say, you know, exit, you know, game over. Um, but probably what we're going to do is we're going to print it out with the uh, with a mine shown. So anyway, let's come back to that in a bit. Um, so, so we click a spot. And then we look up here and check if that's a mine or if it's or what the count is of that particular spot. Okay, and this this is my understanding of how this game works because I, I'm not an expert on this. And so if there is a count, um, then we stop checking from that spot. If it's zero, if it's empty, um, yeah. So we got to kind of combine the two different grids. And there's, there's, again, there's probably an easier way to do it, but this is the way I came up with. And so we got to look at each grid and figure out kind of what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at this. Okay. So again, if it's a mine, print boom, game over. If it's not, okay. So if it is not, what we want to do is we want to look at a couple different things. First, we want to know, is the grid empty? And actually, I guess we don't need to do that because it's either a mine or it's not. So I guess we can skip that check. But what we want to know is actually, 
Yeah, I guess we can. Let's try this. So if the player grid row and column okay, is unknown. So that means if I if I've chosen a spot that is a period, that means it's we don't know what we're looking at yet. Okay, if we go back to this, this would be an unknown. Okay, I, you can't see my sorry, you can't see my mouse. But any of those gray boxes would be unknown because we haven't clicked on it yet. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main screen, and so if it is unknown. Then we're going to say that, that grid spot is now empty. So player grid row call equals empty. Now empty, if we go up here, is zero. Now I could have put a zero there, but um, that's okay. And I think this is correct. Again, I'm not 100% sure about the rules of this game. Um, yeah, my, my student chose this game, not me. Uh, it's a cool game, but just I just don't know it that well. Let me go ahead and try this um, and see what happens. So let's go ahead and click on a space that is empty. You know, click on a space. Um, so oh, we did. We already did clicked on zero zero. So let's go ahead and test that. I know because we, we set flag. So let's click on a different spot. So let's go ahead and click on. No, oh, I don't know. Let's say row one, one, two, three, four. Row one, four. Okay, so row one and four. So one and four. You know, I had this when I was testing it, and I, I do this every single time, and it is line 55. So probably those of you who are following along realize that I did this wrong. And I don't know if that's like an old, I don't know if it's a different, I must, it must be the way it's done in a different language. That's why I keep getting confused from the Python way of doing it. And let's go ahead and run that again. Okay. Aha. That's what I wanted. So this is the spot that I clicked on and it has got a zero. But actually now that I think about it, it shouldn't be a zero. Because what if there was, what if there was something near it? So what I'm going to do is instead of right equals empty, I'm going to say equals count row and call. Let's go ahead and run it. Function object is not scriptable. So this is row comma column. Okay, that's where I was getting confused. Count, count, count. And I'm going to use parentheses because it is a function, not a list. And Okay, now it's still giving me zero, which is probably correct because there are none around it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this spot here instead. So I'm gonna do row one and column, so basically uh, one and zero. Let's go ahead and test that. One and zero. Scroll up, and there we go. It's, it's basically functioning as I expected, okay? Because there are two mines near there. Now what we got to do, and this is this is the hard part, is we have to check all of the connected spaces. Okay. And again, I'm not 100% sure the rules of this particular thing, but my understanding is that we check up, down, left, and right, and the corners. If it's not the corners, we can take that part out, but we'll, we'll test it so that it works for all of them. Hmm down left right or all of them actually I don't know let's look at the uh, secondary screen here um, you know what it must be only up down left and right because it's not extending yeah I think it's up down left right I'm gonna, I'm gonna program it up down left right but it would be easy to add because I'm gonna make it very general so let's go ahead and take a look at this so this is where it gets a little complicated. Um, ah, that's what I did. Okay, so I, I did it a little bit differently before. Um, I'll leave it the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And, okay, 
so find all connected, I'm gonna call them cells, find all connected cells and their values. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and this is, this is a bit algorithmic type stuff. So I'm gonna make a list, excuse me. And I'm gonna start at the current row and column. Okay, which is where I just clicked. And then what I want to do is I want to get the same offsets. Again, I think I need to change this because I don't think I want to do the diagonals in this particular case. And if that's wrong, it's easy to fix. So I'm not going to do the diagonal. So that means anything that doesn't have a zero in it, I'm not going to use because there's up, down, left, and right. So let's do it that way. And we can change it again later if need be. I'll have to ask somebody how this game works. Okay, so I'm looking at up, I'm looking at right, looking at down, I'm looking at left. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit, you know, you may not have seen some of these things before. So while the length of the cells is greater than zero. So currently, cells has one cell in it. That's the starting point. Okay. So while the length of cells is greater than zero, what we want to do is do some checking. Okay. We're going to first take a cell and we're going to pull that cell out of cells. So to do that, I'm going to do cells.pop. Okay, and what pop does, if you haven't seen that before, is it removes the last item in a list and returns it. So in this case, there's only one item, so it's going to pop that off of the list. So what I got to do is check this particular cell and everything around it. And this is basically what we just did. So watch what I do here. So for offsets, it's for offset in offsets. And then the row is going to equal offsets zero plus um, cell zero. And the column is going to equal offset one plus cell one. Okay. So again, cells is a bunch of rows and columns. Right now there's only one. You'll see what I'm going to do in a second. So while the length is greater than zero, so right now there's one, so the length is greater than zero, we pull off one of those. And then for each offset, the same thing we did, so we take the offset plus the row, we take the and again, I could have done it, you know, I could have done it, you know, like I did up here. I could have done offset row and offset column. And, uh, but since we've already done it once, I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, so our row and column. So we're looking at the, how can I put it? We're looking at the cell above it. We're looking at the cell below it, the cell to the right, cell to the left. Um, so what we want to do, we, we've got several... How can I put it? We've got several mm, conditions that we need to satisfy. So first, and it, the order doesn't really matter. So if we look at the player grid, we can only go where there's a negative one. We can only go where it's unknown. So that's our first condition. So if player grid row call equals unknown, and again, this is just a negative one. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little extra parentheses around here to, to clarify. And here's going to be our second condition. In this case, we got to make sure that the grid, so we got to make sure that this is empty at the same spot. So I'm going to say, and grid, not frig, grid row column equals empty okay. 
Okay, and unknown get counts. Let me just check real quick. And okay, then I think what we're gonna do. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is this. There might be another condition. Let me let me just play with this for a bit. Um, I'm gonna say player grid. Um, let's see, it's zero. Player grid. If it's empty, okay. So if it's unknown. So if we don't know what it is, okay, if it's unknown. That's right. Okay, so then player grid row column equals count row and column. So the count that goes there. Okay. Now, no, we are looking at the offsets from our current spot. So what we got to do, this is where it gets a little complicated, well, if it's not already. So if this row and column is not in cells. So if we haven't already looked at it before, well, actually, hmm. all right, let's, well, let's play around with it for a second. Not 100% sure, but I think there's a mistake. Um, it's not in the cells. Then we're going to append it. So cells.append row call. Okay. And then, okay. There's another condition up here. And it's empty. And, sorry, then this is complicated. Um, this is a tough one. And what is it? So if it's empty, so count row call equals empty. So that's the next condition. And don't forget the extra parentheses at the end here. Then we put the count in there. Now if it's not in cells, pen row column else and else player grid bro call equals not double equals equals count and row and call and I am hoping that this is right <laughs> so we'll find out in a minute um, so let's go ahead and go ahead and run it and see what happens. I don't know. Okay, function object not subscriptable because count. Yeah, I did that again. Line 67. So it's telling me that the function is not subscriptable because count is a function, not a list. So I'm going to do row, comma, column, and parentheses. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. And... Okay, so it did not work. It just did not do what we wanted it to do. So that's, oh, well, did it? Actually, no, it did do what we wanted it to do. But do we have to do these? I, this is the part I don't remember if we have to do the, the other angles. Let's go ahead and do the other angles, just see what happens. Um, and that's something, if I'm wrong, you, know, you can fix later. Part two, I'll come back to that after I talk to my student about this one. Okay, where did I go wrong? Again, I probably did count row, yeah. So I did the exact same thing. It's probably really annoying for those of you watching at home and I'm doing this and you know I messed it up. And line 68, I did the same thing. Yeah, I did that everywhere, didn't I? Oh, for heaven's sakes. So we got list index out of range because I forgot to do the checking uh, like I did up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Okay, check for 
our boundaries first. And all this has to be indented. This is pretty complicated. Um, and again, there's probably a much simpler way to do it. I just don't know it. Um, and this should be row, not offset row. And call. And again, I'll put a link down to this code down below. Um, it's still not doing quite what it's supposed to, I don't think. Um, all right, let's give this some thought here. Uh, good y equals unknown. And it's a shame if anybody's watching, we can ask, but in grid, row column equals empty. And counts row call equals empty. Counts. I'm going to change it. Empty. Empty is not, that's not correct. It should be zero. Where, where, where is empty zero? Let's check real quick here. Yeah, empty is zero, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but we'll leave it there. Let me try another spot just to see what happens. And. Yeah, this, like I said, this one's complicated. Um, all right, let's try a different spot. So we clicked here because it should go up here. No, because there's a flag there. So let's get rid of the flag and see if that makes a difference. Flag, 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 flag. No, because the click comes before the flag, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Yeah, so you see how it's not expanding, which is, which is kind of annoying. So let's give it some thought. Um, okay. And that's correct. The player grid is unknown. And the count is zero, and the grid is empty. Equals count row. And if row column not in cell, cells append row column. Okay, now naturally, of course, this worked when I tested it earlier. I'm going to pause this, trying to figure out what's going wrong, if I can pause it. Um, I don't know if there is a pause method, so you just have to bear with me here, because I don't like to, uh, how can I put it? Uh, I forget, I don't know how to, do that. anyway. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little tired, so I'm getting a little rambly here. Um, okay, so cells. So. it it's unknown so if the player grid is unknown yes and the grid is empty yes and count Hmm. Clear grid row. Call equals empty. Yeah, so far so good. This is the only part I'm not sure about. Well, this shouldn't be zero because it's. Ah, that's not possible, I don't think. 
Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's a start. <laughs> now that is not what I expected to happen, but uh, it's probably closer to what I wanted to happen. So let me go ahead and delete all the diagonals again, just see if that's uh, what I needed to do. Um, so I just had a situation. I think I think it was just just a little stupid error, but. Uh, this is a complicated one. And again, it took me a while to figure this out earlier as well. So, okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay, so then. All right, so if count row call equals zero, because if it's not a zero, yeah, and I think this might be it. Let me, let me test it. If it works, I'll explain it. Yeah, yes. This is what I wanted. OK. Yes, I think this is it now. OK, so we don't keep expanding. So like, for example, this is where we clicked, OK? And there is 1, 2, OK? So we didn't do this one. So I don't know if I'm supposed to do diagonals or not. I think maybe I am supposed to do diagonals. Let me go ahead and throw that back in. <laughs> it's not quite looking like what I wanted to. Um, Again, yeah, those of you who know the game are probably like, duh. But yeah, I think, is that what we wanted? Yeah, I just, I'm not sure about this game. I just don't know how it's played. Let's, let's do it without the diagonals for now, and then we can just, you know, we can add it later if you need it. Um, so let me go ahead and try, I'm going to go ahead and put a one here. And then I'm going to click on this spot, so which would be 8-8. Eight, eight. And what should happen is this whole section, we should have 0, to you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so let's let's test that one, and we're gonna click on eight, eight. Yeah, we don't need that anymore because I think count's working. Okay, I think that's correct. Let's scroll up here because this should be zero. This should be zero. This is a one because that's one. This is a two because that should be a two. And why is that not working? Oh, that's a three. Oh, that's a th mm. so that's a two. That's a three. Yeah, I think it's I think it's working. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Again, I'm not hundred percent sure because I just don't play the game. But uh, I think that is basically what's supposed to happen. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. Go, I'm just gonna throw a couple more clicks in here just to kind of experiment here. Um, let's put some more ones in. Um, let's put a one here. One, 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 one. So there's a whole dividing line here, and then I'm gonna click on zero, one, two, three, four, five, and zero. So click. Click zero, uh, yeah, zero, row zero, and column five. It's gonna run it, and yeah, I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Again, I don't know about the diagonals. That's that's the only part I'm really unsure about. Um, if I throw the diagonals in there, does it look better or worse? Um, yeah, it must have been have to put that. In. Yeah, in part two, I'll come back. I'll hopefully have the answer for you, but. Uh, yeah, I think the diagonal, I think that's what it's supposed to look like. I think that's that's better. I'm, I'm happier with that. That looks more like what uh, the game looks like that I can I can think of. So I think it is working. Um, I think it's working. Let me go ahead and add a flag. Okay, so let's put a flag, um, let's say here. So that'd be 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it'll be one and four. I'm gonna put a flag at one and four. So set flag at one and four. And just see what happens. 
Okay. Um, and I think that's what's supposed to happen too, because does the flag block it? I'm not sure. I'll be honest. I don't know enough about the game. I have to I have to go review the rules and, and kind of play it a couple times to figure out if this is right. But I think this is basically the the, the idea that I wanted to get across tonight uh, was that the representation of the data in this case, you know, zeros and ones for the grid where the mines are, and then using negative one for unknown, using negative two for the flag, and then you know zero means it's empty. And then you know one means there's one mine in the area, two in the area, three in the area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this shows you that the representation here is different to how we output it, because we used an F for negative two, we used uh, a period for negative one. Now, if we're gonna switch this over to a different you know, graphical toolkit, of course, we will show the grid in a different way, but we have a function to do that now. And uh, so we can easily convert it, but the basic game itself is kind of working in the background. We can do the count, we can click, we can set a flag, and probably what we might want to do is L if um, player grid row, oops, row call equals flag, because if it's a flag, we want to reverse it. Player grid row call equals unknown. So I think that's that's how we would reverse that. So let's go ahead and test that real quick. So set flag 1.4 and set flag 1.4. Uh, so that should erase the flag. And it didn't get an error, which is good. Oh, the flag is still there. So set flag. flag. Why is that not fixing itself? Set flag one four. Ah, one equal sign. Duh. And so yeah, so the flag is missing. That's that's about what I wanted. Again, I have to check the rules to confirm. Um, but hopefully, you can see now. We at least have the grid working for the most part. Uh, again, the rules are maybe a little bit off, but I will put a link to this down below and you can enjoy that. Okay, so thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe if you can, uh, sign up as a member for early access and all that kind of goodness. Okay, take care and as I like to say, keep on coding.